the Nephilim. In Genesis 6, the Bible describes the, air quoting, sons of God, end of air quote, the Binai Elohim. Elohim meaning ancient translation, angels. They took wives of the, air quoting here, daughters of men, end of air quote, and spawned the, air quoting, Nephilim, end of air quote. This derives from the Hebrew, nephal, which means to fall, and literally means, air quoting here, the fallen down ones, end of air quote, because the fathers were tall, celestial beings who fell from the sky. They and their descendants are mentioned often in the early books of the Old Testament. They were known by the following terms, Rephaim, Amim, Anakim, Horim, Avim, Anunnaki, and Zamzumim. In Babylonian, they were known as the Anunnaki. These beings were, by the Hebrew descriptions, virtual giants. The ancient religions often referred to the parents and their half-breed offspring interchangeably and usually they were referred to again as giants. I've been called a half breed. Yeah, wasn't, wasn't too cool. Mm. Well, likewise, the term Nephilim was interchanged often with the term Anunnaki. Both terminologies usually denoted the half-breed offspring resulting from the union of human females and their astral fathers, referred to as none other than the fallen angels themselves. Regarding the Anunnaki, it must be understood that there were some gross misinterpretations regarding the Anunnaki. Some deliberate and some out of blatant ignorance. There is a difference in the translations lost to over two millennia of translations and misunderstandings of the language. In the author's humble opinion, the Anunnaki were not reptilians, although I concur from firsthand experience and exploration into the matter, that they were giants in those times by normal standards. There exists a degree of discrepancy here. For, according to the altered texts, the, air quoting, old ones, end of air quote, meaning the Anunnaki, were not flesh eaters, nor were they debauchers. They were the ancient ones who initiated the ancient temples of learning many thousands of years before Christ BC. Perhaps this is due to the misunderstandings as to those who were the Nephilim and those who were the Anunnaki. Oh. As my circle of influence see the matter, the Nephilim were the gods themselves where the Anunnaki, on the other hand, were the offspring of the gods. Also, in all fairness, with specific regard to references to reptilian DNA and the bloodlines, the term reptilians is generally grossly shrouded with fear, fairy tale, and misconception due to our general lack of knowledge on the subject. Not everyone has access to ancient records, nor is everyone a student of ancient mythology. So the tendency to take someone else's word for how things are is usually the case. <clears throat> Careful with that. 
that's a fine line of truth. Follow the gut. The gut knows. Let the heart be the compass. So, we had best become familiar with the term reptilian as well as the lineage for the time of this present illusion is nearly over. Reptilian does not translate to, air quoting, all are evil, end of air quote. For the reptilian gene is quite common within our composite genetic makeup. Our understanding of the term reptilian has been for 2000 years at least a problem of misinterpretation, layered over misinterpretation. <laughs> Other people's dogma yet again. We find it is always a matter of his story versus my story or mythology. The dragon throughout the history has always represented great knowledge and spiritual powers, magic, if you will. As it has already been explained in this work, the very term Messiah is derived from the ancient Egyptian term Messiah, meaning, air quoting here, one who is deep descent of the royal court of the dragon, end of air quote. This can be a problem if you hold to watered down dogmatic Nuevo Christian understandings of the ancient texts. One who cares enough to read upon the subject will soon find that in fact, the dragon was very important symbol to the early Christian movement prior to the Justinian Roman version of sanctioned Christianity, which alters considerably from the original text and teachings. Argue the fact after you read up on it, please. For ironically, it is a matter of recorded historical fact. From the Bible, the outcome of the demonic corruption was violence, perversion, and a brood of monstrous beings. Compare this, Genesis 6, 4, air quoting. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took to them wives of all which they chose. Genesis 6, 2. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, the sons of God came into under the daughters of men and they bare children unto them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Genesis 6, 4. The Nephilim were upon the earth in those days and after too, the sons of the gods who cohabited with the daughters of Adam and they bore children into them. They were the mighty ones of eternity, the people of the Shem. Aho. Oh.